Good morning, guys. Um, forgive my surroundings and my bedhead. I'm literally in the bathroom of my hotel room in New York City. I just wanted to put up a brief video about um, my experience this weekend. I had the most incredible conference experience. I was at the BETA NEDA um, 2017 conference where I got to present my uh, peer-reviewed research that I collaborated on with um, some fellow professionals, including Dr. Moore out of Alliant University and previously out of Mercer University when I started working with him. Uh, I'll put a link in the comments in the video to our paper so you can see what we presented about. But I just wanted to express my gratitude this morning um, for everything. I don't know if anybody else has those moments or their days in their life where they're just like, how? Me? How did I get to do something so incredible? And this weekend was definitely that for me. Um, I got to meet some of my liberal heroes in um, the mingling opportunities and in the presentations and in the uh, entire conference this weekend. And I, um, I actually got two of my books that I love that are dog-eared signed for me. One of them is Harriet Brown's Body of Truth, If You Don't Own It. I suggest you go buy it. It's incredible. Uh, she is a remarkable writer, and on top of that, um, all of the research cited in her book is incredible, and it's all in the back, and you can find it. I got to see an incredible presentation on um, how food deserts affect eating disorder behavior and how weight stigma affects medical care. Um, I'm going to, again, in the comments, I will list the names of the presenters so you can look them up and look for their research. I was really, really impressed and really grateful about how this conference this year focused on the social um, justice pieces of um, combating weight stigma and um, getting treatment to people who need it and honestly about getting a deeper understanding at health at every size. It was incredible and I know that the internet distorts concepts and it's very difficult to get nuance in um, internet and social media posts so it was incredible, an incredible learning experience to understand what's going on with the actual data and the actual science and why things work and how it's so, so important to take weight out of the equation when um, getting medical care. A couple of really, really big takeaways for me uh, this weekend, and I'm going to miss some, but um, I just want to touch on a couple. One is um, a Reagan Chastain quote. She wasn't there presenting, but a quote that really sticks with me is, um, when you, as a person in a heavy body, go to seek medical care and you encounter something like, I'll give an example from my personal life, I had pink eye at one point and I went in just to get care for the pink eye because it wasn't going away with warm compresses at home. And the doctor wanted to talk to me about a diet, um, which... <laughs> had no bearing on my pink eye. And I thought this piece of advice was brilliant. Um, when advocating for yourself, which I know can be very difficult, I faced uh, two years of having to advocate for myself before I received a diagnosis and treatment for my autoimmune disorder because doctors and specialists repeatedly diagnosed me as fat, which I use as a descriptor, but they were using as a diagnosis and um, suggested things like the Mediterranean diet uh, for my autoimmune disease. And so I had to advocate for two years before I finally got an accurate diagnosis and help and treatment. But this is the question that um, was quoted that I thought was perfect when you're trying to advocate for yourself. When a doctor starts to talk to you about your weight or what you need to do about your weight when you're there for treatment for something that has nothing to do with that metric, you say, um, okay, that's very interesting. How would you treat this in a thin person? Because I am under the impression that thin people also get pink eye. What would you do for them? And let the doctor answer. And when the doctor answers, go, let's try that. Let's try that treatment. And then maybe if I feel like it or if I'm interested, we can discuss diet another time. Uh, that really stuck with me. That was a brilliant piece of advocacy for yourself. Uh, another thing that really stuck with me as I try to navigate my way through what I'm gonna do with grad school and maybe with my clinical practice is what exactly my role is in the things I believe in and how I wanna make the world a better place. And I've, um, I've come to the conclusion that what I am is a disruptor. I'm a disruptor and I kinda like that, that title. 
And what that means for me is though I may not have all the solutions or the education yet to, to present the solutions I want to the issues that I see in the world, what I do have um, as a strength of my own, because I like to think about strengths-based practice for um, clients and for myself, what are my strengths, is that I'm willing to speak when others are afraid. I'm willing to speak when my voice shakes. And I understand what some of the privileges I have um, because I have read a lot on Kimberly Crenshaw's concept of intersectionality and all the different layers of marginalization people face that I have the privilege of being able to use my voice and what I can do. And this was an amazing quote from Deb Burgard is use that voice to encourage others, including myself, um, to, she said this much nicer than me, but I'm gonna put it in Kai version. Sit down and shut up and listen. Listen, I can stand up and I can use that privilege to go, please listen to these people. Sit down and take a moment and I can sit down because let's, let's face it, you know, in, in many aspects in our world, especially when it comes to social justice issues, um, women of color and black women in particular have done the heavy lifting, pardon the pun because I'm talking about weight bias, but they have historically. And I have the privilege and the ability to be a disruptor in conversations where I can go, excuse me, excuse me, everybody, shut up. And um, I had never framed my ability in that way before or um, my privilege in that way. And I hope that um, continuing my graduate education because I'm hoping to apply to PhD programs, fingers crossed guys that I get in, um, that I can use that so that um, like this conference this weekend with rooms full of people far more brilliant than I am and far more awake than I am, get heard by everybody else. And I just want to express my gratitude for being a part of this this weekend and um, just revel in how excited I am that there are so many people out there working to do good in the world. And sometimes when the world seems rough and seems brutal like it has for the last year for me, I don't know what I, uh, about everybody else, it's incredibly nice to know and understand that there are people out there working to make the world a better place. So happy Sunday, guys. Thanks for bearing with me in my uh, bathroom and my bedhead. And I hope you all have an incredible week. Again, I'll put all kinds of information in the comments for you guys. Just pieces of stuff that I learned. And please, please look up all these scholars and look up all their research. You won't regret it, I promise.